According to the Telegraph, Church of England bishops are launching a project on gendered language referencing God. Said differently, we're debating God's pronouns now. We've, we've made it here. And the Church of England, for those who don't know, is often referenced as the Anglican Church uh, over here. But it's the same, it's the same church. I, it's sad because I've often felt a certain degree of fondness for the Church of England just because that's where I was baptized. Uh, and even then, when I was baptized in the Church of England, it was because th that church seemed closer to scriptures than most of the different Protestant churches around me at the time, which seemed more interested in the politics of the age. The other churches got woke faster, you might say. They often had the hope not hate and all of that, which is like the British version of Antifa. So, um, to move forward though, without, without using masculine pronouns in reference to God, I mean, I always have to stop and go, okay, but how would that even work? You know, like, just to say that that was, that was something we wanted to do. How would you do that while obeying what we're supposed to do? Like, without referring to God as Father, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to do what Anglicans might refer to as the Lord's Prayer, or others, including Catholics, would refer to as the Our Father. The same prayer starts with Our Father, <laughs> not Our Mother, not anything gender neutral, but specifically Our Father. And then, of course, there's the fact that Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, was and is the Son, not the Daughter. And so, to eradicate gendered language is to kind of eradicate the truth there. I mean, like the story of Christ is not a fairy tale to be rewritten for modern sensibilities, it's history and also present. It actually happened. He was a man, you know? And, and so that's, that's, that's the kind of issue. But Reverend, sorry, Reverend Joanna Stobart, Reverend in, of course, the Church of England, yes, she's a woman, from the Diocese of Bath and Wells, has asked the bishops to, quote, provide more options for those who wish to use authorized liturgy and speak of God in a non-gendered non way, particularly in authorized absolutions where many of the prayers offered for use refer to God using male pronouns, unquote. Yet yeah, because so did scripture and because so did Christ repeatedly, in fact, more intimately than was spoken at the time, he constantly used the word for father, constantly. And so, what we're seeing here is this attempted remaking of the faith in the image of modern feminists. So it's not really the faith anymore, it's just their ideology being peddled as something um, more religious, you might say. But that's what's really going on in that respect. There's nothing certainly Christian about it. And on the, on the other side, they could argue that, you know, God doesn't have a gender, you know, he made man and woman, man, man and woman in his own likeness. And okay, there's certainly a point to that. However, we know from Christ that we are to refer to him as father. And that just kind of ends it because there is no greater you know, person we're supposed to follow. There's, there's no, no, no greater teacher that there could possibly be. So if you believe in the faith, then you, you just do what is asked. You do what is taught. And these people don't want to. And of course, again, these are people who have, you know, female reverence. So there is that. But like I said, I think it's sad because I know that other Protestant churches have done this, certain ones, but they haven't been um, as historically um, more devout as the Church of England was at one time, but it's just kind of been a very slippery slope ever since then. So it is the way things are going. I just thought I'd go ahead and share that with you because it's just the latest in this long series of just absurdity, you know, of the eradication of men and women and the differences between them, of the eradication of any sort of, I think especially uh, symbolism of, of man, of masculinity, of fatherdom, you know, all of these different things, of a patriarch, right? And I think we're in a society that seems to, or that does, that lacks patriarchs, that lacks, you know, male figures as sort of guardians of, of morality, of the way that we should go, uh, of defenders of the family unit. We're lacking all of these things and our society suffers as a result. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description. 
as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much.